hey guys welcome back to my channel so today i will share with you some of the cultural shocks that i experienced when i visited the u.s okay so my family and i will flew all the way from australia to the u.s and while in the u.s we visited about four states so today i'll be sharing with you some of the things that shocked me while i was in the u.s okay please keep in mind the things that shocked me might not be a shock to you okay and this is from the perspective of someone that is living in australia so these are my own experiences <music> First up is the driving. I'm starting with the driving because this is the first thing I encountered when we first arrived in New York, okay? And I was so surprised at how much the drivers blast the horns, okay? This is because uh, I've lived in Australia for a while now and we don't really use horn while driving. I can't remember how many times I've heard people use their horns while driving. But the day we arrived in New York, when my brother and his wife came to pick us up from the airport, we barely finished loading our luggages into the trunk. We were already hearing horns. People were just blasting horns. Beep, pop. I was like, what is going on here? And even on our way home, I noticed that if you waste a second at the traffic light, like when the traffic light goes green, and you waste a second before moving, best believe that the person behind you will start blasting the horn like they're about to run you over. I don't know, but New York drivers, they just seem to be very impatient. The drivers and the pattern of driving in New York was definitely giving Lagos vibes. I'm sorry, if you live in New York, please don't come for me. Thank you. <laughs> so that was very surprising to me, just hearing horns here and there. So the next thing that surprised me is the fact that you can turn right or left at a red traffic light, okay? The first time I noticed this one, I was like, am I seeing well at all? So I noticed that in the US, if you're approaching a traffic light and it's red, you can turn right or left, except where it specifically says no right turn or no left turn. I noticed it while in New York and then when we went to Detroit as well, I saw that it was the same thing. That came as a surprise to me because here in Australia, red light is red light. You're not moving forward, you're not turning right, you're not turning left. You have to wait at the traffic light until the light goes green, okay? So when I saw that, I was, yeah, I was really surprised. Still on driving, another thing that really shocked me, this one was actually very scary, shocking and annoying. And it's the fact that people use their phones while driving. Like why? It's either they're answering a call, they're trying to make a call, they're trying to do one thing or the other, or maybe they're trying to use the GPS to figure out the direction of where they are going. This one was very, very shocking to me because here in Australia, we don't do that. That's not how we used to do here, okay? So there was this Uber guy that drove us one day and this guy was practically on his phone for the most part of the ride. There was a point it even looked like he stopped in the middle of the road to figure out one or two things on his phone. I was just like, what is going on? So I noticed this while in New York, when we went to Detroit, it was the same thing. When we went to the other states as well, I noticed that, yeah, it seems to be like, their normal way of driving that was so shocking to me because the fact that the people that drive these cars and use their phone while driving they're actually using new model cars why not just uh, use your car gps or just connect your phone to your car so that if you have a call coming in while driving you can just aside from the car this was a big culture shock to me okay because i just thought it was a very dangerous thing to do okay enough of driving let's talk about the food in the u.s so one of the things i noticed especially the first day we went to a restaurant to eat out is the fact that their food portions are so big oh my goodness i also noticed that they have a lot more options for their side dishes than just fries okay which is what we normally get here as side dish in australia Really, yeah except there are other side dishes that i've not explored so anytime we went to the restaurant to eat i always wondered why the food was so big but i like the fact that they always had takeaway so that if you can't finish your food you can package it and take it home because somebody like me i never saw myself finishing such a huge quantity of food another thing i noticed about their food is that their food is always so salty how do you guys eat so much salt like that was mind-blowing to me i remember the first day i tried uh what's the name again chick fil -A. I could barely finish it because it felt like after preparing the chicken they sprinkled salt on top of the chicken 
how do you guys eat so much salt there was this other day we went to a restaurant for dinner i think i ordered fish and chips or something the fish was so salty i didn't enjoy it as much because my taste bud just couldn't handle the amount of salt that was in the fish still on eating out or food or whatever another thing i noticed which was shocking to me is that when you go to a restaurant to eat okay so after eating and it's time for you to pay for your food so instead of bringing the card reader or the card machine to you for you to tap and pay they come to you you give them your card like you hand your card over to them they take your card away they go they process the payments and then they come back to you with the receipts <laughs> so the first time i noticed this i was like okay I just kept quiet i didn't say anything i didn't ask any questions so i noticed it about two times or three times so i had to ask my sister is this how you guys do it here she was like yeah and hmm, the nigerian in me the Igbo blood in me just couldn't understand why it was done that way because here in australia after eating you just um it's either you go to the counter just tap your card and pay or they come to you with the card reader or the card machine you tap your card and you pay so it was a bit shocking and surprising to me to see someone come take your card away go and process the payment and then bring back your card what if after processing the payment my card is compromised because i'm not saying the waiters are thieves or whatever i'm just saying anything can go anything can happen it might not even be them it might be someone beside them that might just take a screenshot of your card and before you know it you start getting debit alert <laughs> so um if you live in the us i would like to know is there any reason why it's done like that is it the same everywhere because like i said we visited about four states next up is the taxes so i remember going to a local beauty supply store i picked up a certain hair product for a certain price and when I got to the checkout, the price was different, okay? So I wanted to ask the guy at the checkout, but then my sister just tapped me and said, don't worry, that's the added tax. I was like, why? I'm not saying we don't pay taxes here in Australia, right? But whatever you are buying at the store or at the shop or at the groceries, best believe that the taxes has already been added, okay? Sometimes you don't even get to know how much tax that was added to that item. But I noticed that it's different in the US. You pick an item that says maybe $2.50, you get to the checkout and the price becomes $3 something. Except there's a reason why it's done like that. Maybe they want you to know how much tax you are paying per item, but I just didn't get it. So that was a shock to me. So another thing I noticed in the US, which I really loved, is the fact that their houses are so, so big, okay? Compared to what we have here in Australia, their houses are way bigger, they are very spacious. And I also noticed that most of their houses have what they call basements. And I've seen that a lot of people use their basement for different purposes. Some people use it as their home office. I've seen people that use it as their home gym. I've also seen people that use it as an extra room, okay? There was actually this um, restaurant that we went to the day we visited Washington, D.C. I noticed that that restaurant was at the basement of that building or of that house. So yeah, that's one thing I really loved about their houses because it's so big and it's so spacious. Australian houses are not that big, okay? <laughs> Roadside hawkers. Hmm. For some reason, I wasn't expecting to see anything like this anywhere in the US, okay? But I saw some roadside hawkers on the streets of New York, okay? I was so surprised and I was so shocked. In fact, there are some places in New York that you'll be like, you'll be wondering whether you're actually in the US. Yeah, I had to look around like, am I really in the US? Because trust me, those areas we are giving Lagos vibes, especially the place that I can't remember the name of this place, but we saw some people selling shoes by the roadside, and it reminded me so much of Nigeria, and it was definitely giving Aria Aria International Market vibes. So another strange thing I noticed, especially in New York, is the fact that people park their cars on the street. Okay. I don't know for some reason i just feel like it makes the street look so crowded even for houses that seem to have a garage you still see a lot of cars parked on the streets on both sides of the street that was so surprising to me because yeah here in australia we don't really see a lot of cars parked on the street like both sides of the street people park their cars in the garage you can see one or two cars parked outside 
but it was just too much in New York and again it reminded me so much about Nigeria. Another thing I would like to talk about is the car plate number and I noticed this one while in Michigan okay so I noticed that the cars in Michigan usually had only one plate number which is usually at the back. I was very surprised because I'm used to seeing two plate numbers uh, on a car one at the back and one in front but while in Michigan I could see that all the cars had only one plate number at the back so yeah I was really really surprised so the last thing I would like to talk about and please correct me if I'm wrong but I noticed that when it comes to waste disposal everything goes in one trash can the cardboard papers the leftover food the broken bottles the empty cans or whatever they put it in one trash can I think I noticed this in Michigan because it was different while in New York so they will normally put everything in one trash can except the people that come to pick up the trash usually sort it out because here in Australia we have different colors of uh, trash cans for different types of waste we have the one for recycle we have the one for general waste so i was really surprised when i saw them putting everything in the same trash can i had to ask do you guys not recycle here again like i said except if the people that pick up the trash are the ones that sort it out and recycle them because i was really surprised when i saw everything being dumped into one particular trash can okay so yeah guys that's it for today's video those are all the culture shocks that i experienced while in the us okay if you have visited the us from another country please let me know in the comment section did you experience any culture shock and if you did what were your culture shocks i really love to read about them okay thank you guys for watching today's video don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you all in my next video bye